The following program is an exclusive production of Action Sports Cable Network. Every fall in Oregon, a strange phenomenon happens. Thousands of kids and adults converge upon every open playing field during the breezy weekends. Kids ranging from kindergarten to high school hit the field to compete. Soccer moms and dads sit at the sidelines. Their presence alone encourages their children to score that next goal and make them proud. Volunteer coaches encourage their teams in good sportsmanship, regardless of a win or loss. They play in rain or shine, but mostly rain. For these kids, it not only takes the will to win, but the stamina and commitment to keep going despite the outward circumstances. Soccer becomes more than a game. It becomes a tool for adulthood. This is the third of three television specials on kids' soccer in Oregon. Be ready for it, Madison. Here it comes. Each episode will feature a coach who loves the kids and loves the game. Stay spread out. We'll show you why this game is so special to so many people. And we'll also show you what keeps them coming back. Two, four, six, eight. Dinner, we appreciate crazy girls. And in the end, we hope to encourage you to get involved as a player, Quick, go ahead, go, 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 get the a coach, or a soccer parent. When I first um, got acquainted with soccer, my daughter, my oldest daughter, was in kindergarten. And I was relatively new to the community. I worked out of the community, worked downtown. So I knew very few people in the community and when I first showed up on that soccer field with my little kindergarten child and all these other strange people, I had no idea that I would become lifelong friends with some of those people. It was a great place to meet other parents who shared interests and shared the same kinds of aspects of life that we did. So socially it's a great way for parents to enmesh in the community and meet other people. It appears that most families, at least for the early years, up through 5th, 6th, 7th grade, if one plays, they all play. And it, it is a huge commitment because, of course, they don't all play at the same time and they might not all play at the same field. Um, so a lot of families do make that commitment. And so they do become sort of a family event. And, and that, I think, helps build the community aspect of it, too, because the coach for this year might be the little brother's coach next year and pretty soon you sort of know the same parents and pretty soon maybe you're volunteering in on the soccer board and that happens. <laughs> it's probably um, one of those experiences that your kid in the end will thank you for. They'll just go and have fun and look back and say, I'm really glad you had me play soccer because I made friends, I learned how to work on a team. I think that's a huge value to kids. Is learning how to play a team sport, and learning that there are social aspects of that that become valuable, invaluable to us in our work life as adults. We need to know how to play well with others, and how to share, how to pass a ball, how to work as a team, how to have a unified goal, but, but accomplish it as a group.
How I got involved in this actually is, uh, was quite interesting because after over 10 years of being away from soccer, uh, my oldest daughter just wanted to get into it uh, desperately, which uh, had my younger daughter uh, getting more, uh, also very interested. Getting in line uh, to register uh, the girls, uh, my wife said, you should, you should coach. And, uh, it was a five minute decision that my wife made for me, and I'm actually I'm glad she did. Mark up everybody! Mandy behind you! I got drafted as a coach, and that was basically my first team uh, roughly three seasons ago. Ever since, it's become uh, just a really part of my uh, daily life, if you will, even though we don't really play year round. Probably the biggest challenge is to get the kids at this age okay, follow through, to stay in the game. You lose a ball, you go get that ball because that ball was yours, you lost it, it's your fault, you go for it. Staying on them so that they stay mentally in the game, so that the physical aspect doesn't come into play, so that they know what to do without the ball to help a play or something to that effect. It's, it's probably the one thing that we do try to encourage the most. Yes, Sarah, kick it! Yeah! Nice, nice. Speak of, a, speak of a comeback. That's why she's left, left forward. This last season, uh, Scott had more of a offensive skill set. And uh, on the other hand, my skill set has been always more on the midfield and the defense and the goalie. So it was great to be able to just know that we, our skill sets, we're going to be able to get the best out of the girls, or at least as, 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 as good as we, we could. Um, so from that perspective, it is critical to have assistant coach, especially in the beginning when you're trying to get all of those wheels to roll together at the same time. Who do you turn to? What are we doing wrong? What are we doing right? <laughs> And uh, so at the very least, uh, having an assistant coach to bounce ideas against is very good. She did. I saw that too. Yes. Trying to create a bigger love for sports in general, um, and soccer in this case, perhaps uh, I would allow them to stay active physically a little bit longer. Should they become uh, a soccer coach? Should they become a very successful businesswoman? Uh, should they become, who knows, a politician, whatever that may be, there are some mental exercises, if you will, that have started when they were young. I think overall, the participation, the team effort, just the being with other people, the interaction, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great benefit to, to all of these kids. Going into coaching, and, and that probably applies to just about any sport, I don't think it's a mast, but I think you should know the game. And that's perhaps one of the reasons why I was always, or have been seen as uh, too strict of a coach, because I had the opportunity to know the game. Back, stop! Megan, Tasha! Anybody that wants to do anything, I think, can do it. It's a matter of wanting, you know, how much you really want to do it. What to do aside from whether you know how to play the game or not, take a clinic take the licenses, whether we like it or not, when you're coaching you have to be uh, above the skill set, at least mentally. You have to be able to, even if you cannot physically be better than the kid, you have to uh, know how to improve their game. Just dribble to the side, because this girl that's marking you is not only stronger than you are, but she's pretty fast as well, okay? So what you need to do is to try to stop it on the run to give you, remember, the half a second to open yourself and kick the ball, okay? Okay. All right, go for it. Being able to participate uh, in, in, in something that is going to do something for the kid. We, we can't really tell what and, and to what extent, but certainly helps them. Helping somebody else play better soccer, uh, it is definitely something that I very much appreciate. It, it just feels good. Uh, being able to play soccer with the girls, uh, although my physical condition is certainly not what it used to be and, and, and it shows when I practice with them, is certainly another pleasure. 
the satisfaction is fairly uh, intangible. I mean, just being able to play to help the kids, and of course, being a coach itself, you know, knowing that somebody's looking after you, it's there is somewhat some, a level of satisfaction right there, knowing that you are being some sort of some sort of an example to look at. So it's fairly intangible, uh, but it feels pretty good. Very nice, girls. Nice, nice passing. Girls. Very nice. Well, we've been we've been working for probably for the last month or so about three bases of the game, the passing, the scoring, and the team playing. And we definitely have been uh, finally getting the results of what we were looking for, which was uh, being able to, to take the practice to the game. And it's pay, paid off in such a way that uh, the results speak for themselves. Uh, we walk away with a six nothing score. So it's, it's nice to see that. Um, and, and it's perhaps because the girls are just starting to relax more. They've been pretty tense because it was the, it's been the beginning of the, of the season. So everything is just kind of setting a lane and, and uh, uh, it's just, just paying off. My daughter is Laura Wright. She's in uh, seventh grade. She's been playing soccer since she was in fourth grade. And uh, soccer is important for her because uh, she loves the sport. She likes the uh, athletic part of it. She likes the competition. Uh, keeps her occupied, gives her something to focus on. My daughter is Allison Henry. She's uh, 12 years old and been playing soccer since she was about five. And uh, she just really enjoys it. She plays indoor soccer, she plays outdoor soccer. Um, she enjoys uh, being with the kids. She enjoys the competition. My daughter's name is Sarah. She just turned 12. She's one of the youngest uh, members of the team. And why, she loves soccer. Uh, my daughter's name is Megan. Um, I think playing soccer for her is important, uh, partially because it's good exercise for her, it gives her an opportunity to get out, um, interact with some other kids that she doesn't see all the time. Coming from Southern California where this wasn't a huge event, we moved up here and it's, um, it's a way of life. And uh, it quickly sucked us in and it's become our, our way of life as well. And both our children play it, love it and I can't imagine them doing something other than soccer. It can become a family event, and that's what we've made it. It's just the family. We bring the chairs, we come out, and we're here for the day. We've had times where we've had five and six games on a weekend. It's important for us to have the kids involved in something other than just school, to have them involved physically with something. Um, and it is, it is a big commitment, but we've done it as a family. We're, we're that group that you see standing out in the rain, freezing to death, clutching cups of coffee and <laughs> encouraging them on. Because we really believe in our kids and we, and we, and we love the sport and, and we want the best for our kids and also for the community. And this is another way of building community, which is so important. We've, we've become very isolated. Everybody's so busy with work and school and what have you. Um, I think it's, this is very important for that aspect as well. And, and you're almost sorry when the season's over <laughs> because of that, yeah. The thing I, I've enjoyed and appreciated the most uh, for her in, in these activities is, um, is the competition and then that they learn to practice all week long, they go to a game, they play hard at the game, and if they lose, it's not the end of the world, they learn that there's another game. And that's an important lesson that especially girls, when I was growing up, they didn't have that. You get up, you try your best, and you may win, you may lose, but you just keep trying. And, uh, and that's good. I, I'm, I'm glad she's had that chance to do that. It is giving her some, some values and, and things as far as responsibilities and what it's going to be like when she has to be up going to work every day and making decisions about whether she should be out the night before. So. 
Out in that field, they are on their own. So this is um, the ability to make decisions, um, suffer the consequences of those decisions. Whether it's you kicked with your left foot, that would have been a good time to use your right. You should have dove this way, you dove that way. Um, just even as far as brushing off an injury, you know, is that really a hurt ankle or can you walk it out, is it a cramp? These are decision making times and this is in small baby steps, helping them learn how to make decisions for an adult. You know, every child is by their nature selfish <laughs> and they learn to share and they learn to um, compete, but they learn to be compassionate for different uh, members. Um, they learn to communicate, and these are skills that they're going to take into the workplace um, in their adulthood. Yeah, yeah and, those, and those skills are wonderful. You can, you, there's no other way to learn them, I think. Yeah. It's a good activity um, for the kids to be involved in. I think it gives them a sense of um, teamwork and, and um, uh, independence at the same time because it takes a lot of commitment on their own, um, you know, to, to improve their skills and, and things like that, but it requires them working together with their teammates to to get better as they go. Good try, good try, that's good. Come on, more cup. Lisa, Lisa.
wanted to first of all thank Scott for uh, being all this year with me and it was really it was a great deal of help having him a second second head and definitely it's a uh, it makes it much easier when you're coaching four eyes as opposed to two or two heads as opposed to one um, so thank to Scott for that um, especially when I was out of town Um, and thank you to the girls for putting up with me, first of all, uh, I suppose, um, because <laughs> um, by, uh, as a strategy, we had the goal of uh, getting a team that, of which several of the girls have played together before, uh, but more than half of the team have never played together, so that was a challenge. And having played several teams, if not most of them, that have been playing for anywhere from four to eight years, and being able to, in about five or six weeks, put together a team that was standing up to these teams, beating these teams, sometimes losing to them, but definitely not going down uh, without giving a fight, uh, was one heck of an achievement for these girls. So I thank you them for that. The preceding program has been an exclusive production of Action Sports Cable Network.